Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on real life situation in my country during this awful war with Russia. If you're new to the channel, check the videos and subscribe because there are many important and useful things and interesting things, hopefully, that the world needs to know about Ukraine. And today I want to speak about a country that is extremely far away from us, but at the same time turns out to be dangerous and important during Russian war in Ukraine. That is China. You know that I'm always subjective and I don't claim to be an expert in uh, world economy or whatever. I'm an expert Ukrainian because I live all this time in my country and I feel it. And at the very beginning, I knew not much about China. Well, of course, I knew geography, I knew economy, I knew that people work in really bad conditions and many uh, indigenous peoples are suppressed. But all I knew personally about China was that many of my former students actually work there. There were lots of programs that allowed them to travel to China and work there as English teachers because the level of uh, English uh, language education is pretty high. Chinese wanted to hijack the world economy and they realized that no matter how much they want others to learn Chinese, it is easier to learn English. That's why a huge demand for English teachers was on their labor market and many of uh, my students also went there to work as English teachers. And there, from uh, Instagram vlogging, for example, because they had to use VPN, you know, the censorship in China is really strong. But anyway, they updated us with information. And uh, from the very beginning, I realized that the society is very authoritarian. Because what can you wait from uh, uh, a communist regime, no matter how uh, polished it may look? So anyway, uh, they don't treat foreigners really well and, uh, of course, they always limit the possibilities they can have in Chinese society. And none of uh, these people, students who work there, wanted to stay in um, China. And I think it is, oh, you see, it's sunny. <laughs> and I think it is a very vivid, uh, like, example that society is very hostile to uh, foreigners. But uh, since the beginning of uh, this war, we all were extremely attentive on the attitudes of China. Well, first of all, because we clearly understood that Russia is greatly dependent on China, that China is slowly buying Russia, uh, and uh, that much depends on the attitudes of uh, Chinese president and uh, the party to uh, this war. And um, inside Ukraine, at the very beginning of this war, we realized that even though China pretends to be neutral, of course, it allowed Putin to attack Ukraine. And perhaps uh, both of these authoritarian regimes believed that Ukraine will fall soon, West is not united, and they will be able to hijack our country in a couple of days or maybe in a couple of weeks. Then a similar scenario could have been repeated by China in the Pacific or in other zones that they consider their zones of influence. But it didn't happen the way they wished because it turned out that Ukrainians are brave and strong and they are fighting their existential fight and the West is actually united and pretty well feels the values that are important for our part of the world for a long period of uh, time. So, uh, I think that uh, to be able to understand what is going on in Chinese society, in global society, we can ask a very simple question. If you ask Ukrainians, do they want peace? Do they want this war to stop? The answer will always be yes. If you ask Russians, the answer will be no. Because, come on, this war lasts only because Russians want to continue destroying Ukraine, stealing our territories, killing our people, erasing our culture. Otherwise, they have all the tools and mechanisms to stop it in a blink of an eye. Then, if we ask uh, our allies in the West, in Europe, in the US, do they want this war to end? The answer will be 100% yes. And if we ask people in China, I mean people who decide something in China, the answer will definitely be no, they want this war to continue. Because the longer this war lasts, the more exhausted the world is. And for China, it is a benefit. Why? Because, first of all, 
they uh, continue their cooperation with uh, Russia and they receive lots of benefits from that. Uh, it looks like uh, it gives them like this is a win-win situation for China because they receive oil, gas, everything they need for their industry at lower prices from Russia and at the same time Russia is getting weaker and they have more possibilities of uh, getting, I don't know, its infrastructure, some of its territories and trading uh, the things they want because, come on, Russia does not have any other real ally because you cannot treat like Iran, for example, seriously in this thing. Uh, so that's why uh, China strengthens its relations with Russia and um, wants this war to continue because the longer it lasts, the more they can get from Russia, the weaker Russia becomes and the weaker Ukraine and the West becomes in the eyes of uh, China. And uh, they polarize the world very uh, vividly. And uh, in this uh, democratic countries, we have a tradition not to be very like uh, black and white, to speak about um, pros and cons. And they see the world as the West and the East, as uh, the democratic world with the US domination and the uh, Asian world with authoritarian approach to uh, rule and uh, Chinese domination. And uh, they are brave in that because uh, recently in France there was a scandal when a Chinese ambassador started doubting if uh, uh, post-Soviet countries and there are lots of republics they consider uh, still belong to the zone of influence of Russia, uh, whether they are enough independent to act as a sovereign state. And that was a huge scandal after which uh, Chinese government asked to forgive uh, their ambassador for such words. But we all know in China it happened uh, not uh, accidentally. It was an agreed decision and only because the party allowed the ambassador voiced this message and perhaps they are testing the world with such messages and uh, that's how they see their reality. They see that big authoritarian regimes have to rule this world and all the other countries and cultures and languages should be seen just as their zones of interest, uh, of their benefit and so on. For example, the problem is that many European countries, some of our allies like France, I mean not the country but Macron, and uh, some politicians in Italy start inviting China to become a peace skipper in Europe. And it looks really bad because we have a conflict in Europe caused by authoritarian Russian regime. And we invite an Asian country, super country, super economy to solve this problem in Europe. And or what is worse, we invite not just a simply big country that uh, is um, like a big country, but we invite an authoritarian regime. And by the way, uh, we all know in what conditions many people live in China, how suppressed they are. And many of them uh, go through things similar to genocide. And we invite such party to participate uh, in uh, uh, the solution of war in Ukraine. Of course, we have to be realistic. Such uh, negotiators, such peacekeepers cannot bring us uh, peace. And when you look deep at the formula of peace that China offers and repeatedly announces in the media, it has nothing about um, like Russian troops leaving the territory of Ukraine or the return of Ukrainian territories back. Uh, they only proclaim that both parties have to be respected, which once again, if translated into normal language means we have to respect Russia's desire on Ukrainian territories because uh, they are not independent enough to decide and there are zones of influence of Russia. And as a result, in future, there are zones of influence of China. And here we can uh, clearly see they hint on Taiwan and they start talking that this is a historically Chinese territory. People in Hong Kong are suffering and many, many dangers appear in other parts of the world. 
So it is for me as a Ukrainian 100% obvious that China wants this war to continue. China wants us and our allies, democratic allies, to get exhausted and then to rule the world and to support other wars and conflicts in different parts of the world. Why? Because any war brings China economic, cultural, political uh, benefit. And if they see that benefit, why do they need to fight for peace, to negotiate for peace and so on? So I guess uh, we have to be brave enough and sober enough to understand that China cannot be a part of negotiations in this war. Because if Ukraine loses this war or if we uh, freeze this war, uh, we get a very disturbed world. Uh, we get a democracy that is seen as weak and authoritarian regimes start developing and start dictating the world order. And then we are in great trouble and I hope I don't need to explain uh, this. Um, let me know what do you think about uh, the part of China in Russian war in Ukraine and do you feel safe looking at these new tendencies where more and more European leaders want to uh, like invite China to the table of negotiations and I see that even President Zelensky reacts to that and demands direct contact with Xi Jinping. But honestly, for me, it's just very similar like talking to Putin because we cannot look inside China. It's very closed. It limits its communication with the outer world. It's extremely controlling of its own population. But I have this like 100% feeling that many, many, many wrong things are happening inside of their society. And when we consider people who create bad habits inside of their own country, peacekeepers and negotiators, once again, we are in trouble. So we have to be strong, we have to be patient and we have to be united because I don't want to live in the world where Russia and China rule. Thank you so much for your support and for your understanding. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. This means a lot and helps develop the channel. Also subscribe to my Twitter and Instagram and join my Discord community. The links are in the description of this video. And Slava Ukraini!